All right, so this video will provide teachers an overview of LEAP 360 Diagnostic and Interim. So when you go to the Canvas course for LEAP 360 EBR, um, when you go to the home page, you're going to see information for coordinators, and then when you scroll down, you will see information for teachers. Um, for this overview, though, I want you to go to where it says Leap 360 Guide for Teachers. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to open this up. Now, there's a link here, and this link will provide you with, with quite a bit of information. Um, it'll give you an overview. It will give you information about goal-setting practices. It will discuss how to use the reports. There uh, information on instructional planning. There's information on how to access Eagle items. And then there's information on how to access the diagnostic and interim assessment guides. So I'm going to click on this link. Now I'm going to click on the down arrow right here. And it's going to open or download it um, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and then this is what you're going to see. So notice at the top it says Teacher's Guide to Leap 360. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size. Alright, so Teacher's Guide to Leap 360. Notice there are 59 pages to this. So, and all of these are hyperlinked. So this guide includes the following sections. Um, Leap 360 Classroom, so there's the overview goal setting process, um, making meaning, um, discusses the reports, and then instructional planning which um, indicates information on um, there's EGLE, formative assessments, and then information on English and math. And if I go to the next page um, there's the assessment design. So you click on this and it'll talk about the assessment, the diagnostic assessment guide, and then the interim assessment guide for both ELA and math. And then finally, um, there's additional resources on page 48 and then the appendix. And then, um, and then remember, as I said, when you go here, these are hyperlinks. So for example, if you, let's say, want to go directly to the Diagnostic Assessment Guide, you just click on this and it brings you to, in this case, page 15. Okay? Alright, but I'm going to go back to the top here and let's just, just go through each of those pages. Uh, and we're not going to go through all of these. I mean, there's 59 pages, right? But, but en enough to get you to understand the overview of Leap 360. Okay, so on page three, you'll see um, Leap 360 in the classroom. So there's the overview. And then you'll, let me go ahead and decrease this a little bit. All right, and so you'll see a column where it has diagnostic assessments, and then a column where it has interim assessments, and then you have your K2 form of assessment task and Eagle items. And so notice that for each of those, you will see when to use these assessments, what they're used for, or what's on them, and then where you can access those, or students to access those, and then who takes these assessments. So for example, if you look at diagnostic assessments, it says when um, students will take this at the beginning of the school year, or the start of a course. Um, and then what these if remember we're talking about diagnostic here and you could you could read where it says interim and K2 formative and ego assessments as well but the what assessments that provide a general sense of readiness for grade level content and the level of support anticipated in ELA items have been developed using readily accessible and moderately complex text in math items assess students mastery of prerequisite standards for the major course work they are not pretests which determine pre-existing content knowledge so just keep in mind that these these diagnostic tests measure um, previous uh, prerequisites so for example the previous year of standards 
So these are not pre-tests like you normally see at the beginning of the school year in, in um, DNA or Renaissance, you know, like the pre-test, post-test. And then you're going to, uh, students will access this using the DRC Insight Portal. And um, so students in grades 3 through 8 will take ELA and math. And then high school, uh, there's English 1, English 2, Algebra 1, and Geometry. All right. And then um, let's go to, I'm skipping some stuff uh, because of the time constraint, but but um, you should read all of those pages just to get you a little bit more familiarized with Leap 360. There's a section on goal setting. And um, so let me go ahead and look at this. So it says this, Leap 360 provides teachers with connected assessments designed to give meaningful information about student performance throughout the year. The assessments are aligned to both the Louisiana student standards and to the approach of LEAP 2025 and may also help in setting goals. So the table below outlines what this process might look like for teachers. So let's just continue talking about the diagnostic assessment and then you can read on for the interim and then uh, um, and then the LEAP 2025 assessments, those are their summative assessments that students take at the end of the school year. But going to the column that has the diagnostic assessments, so one, uh, analyze the results of LEAP 360 diagnostic um, assessments. So there's a link here that says using LEAP 360 diagnostics for more specific guidance. Two, determine the learning gaps. Three, create a plan to address learning gaps through engagement with high quality curricular resources. Refer to addressing unfinished learning gaps for specific guidance for ELA and math. So there's a, a link here. So for example, if I just, um, I'm going to right click and open in a new window just to see what that looks like. All right. So then there's an error here. So I get an error. So it looks like the, the um, that link is no longer valid. That's interesting. So let's go back here and see what this is. So let's open that in the new window. Um, all right, at least that's available. But this one here, the refer to addressing unfinished learning gaps. So there might be, just to let you know, there might be situations where the links are no longer valid. Um, if that's the case, then just let me know, or you can email. Um, l e and let them know um, that these links are not available because um, they're the ones that put this up on the on the website um, but let me check again and see um, yep it's still let me do it this way yeah so that links no longer working okay so so there are gonna be situations where that is going to occur all right so let me go back all right so let me go back and find where I was. All right. Okay. And then um, let me expand this a little bit. Okay. And then number four, use instructional support materials such as support uh, supports flowchart to develop targeted supports to meet the individual needs of students. Let's see if that link works, right? So let's open this up. All right. So at least that works. So so there's the the flow charts that they were talking about. So notice there's 19 pages. So just go through this. There's quite a bit of information here. Notice that in these flow charts, there's also hyperlinks as well. All right, so let's go to the next part. So the, the page five talks about making meaning. Um, so this is where they start talking about the different reports that are available. So there's the test session summer reports. Um, there's the test session response maps. And then there's the individual summer reports and then the student response maps. So there's four reports that, that you as a teacher have access to. So you have access to, the, to your test session. So hopefully for the formative assessments, the diagnostic and interim, the school test coordinator um, created the test sessions where all the students are in one session so therefore you can have one report for each of your classes um, but you, you also have access to individual 
summer reports and then you have access to student response maps and then if you scroll down they'll talk more about each of those um, now so here's some questions they indicate that when you're looking at those reports that you should be asking yourself so for example if we go to the the diagnostic reports it says what does the analysis of the data suggest about my current students readiness for their grade level what patterns am I seeing in my students response that I can use to inform my instruction and what information from the data analysis is most useful in developing individual plans for my students with the most significant learning gaps all right and then these are sample reports that they have so you have the student summer reports uh, some sorry session summer reports so you have the the sample so this is a sample test session summary report so this is what it looks like it's hard to see here but um, when, when you actually go in and download a student report uh, a session map report you'll see what it looks like then you have the test session response map this is what it looks like and uh, then you have the individual I'm sorry the the um, student summary reports so this is a student summary report for individual students that's what that looks like and then you have a student response map and that's what that looks like so those are the reports that are available now before I go on if I go back to the to the um, to the uh, canvas course let me go back to the home page right here let me scroll down right here where it says reports for teachers so th the, these are links to where it discusses more about those reports so so we were just talking about the uh, leap 360 guide for teachers but these are um, more detail into what those reports look like so you have your student reports you have your multi-level reports for teachers and then it discusses how to find those reports All right, so just make sure you you go through these as well alright so let's go back and I probably lost my page no I think I, all right this is where we were all right so then on page 10 there's a section on instructional planning so make sure you look at that and I'm hoping that these hyperlinks work uh, if they don't just just let me know um, I can't check all of those hyperlinks I'm hoping I'm assuming of course we just saw that that one of them didn't work but we're assuming that they all work um, then on the next page, page 13, this is where they talk about the EGLE and the K2 formative assessments. Um, so let's go on. All right, so this is the EGLE. So there's an EGLE web page. So if I click on this, just to, um, I'm going to go ahead and right click. Hopefully it will open. Um, all right, so this is the EGLE web page let's say you want to go to sixth grade math so these are your math eagle items your science social studies and it looks like there aren't any for for ELA it just looks like there's something for math science and then US history for high school so let's just click on sixth grade math right here it opens up as a word document opens up as a Word document. I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Oops. All right. So, so first of all, it it will ask you for, and I can't move it over. Um, it will ask you for a password. The password is is um, Educate 2020 with a capital E. So Educate 2020 with a capital E, and then once you open it up I'm gonna go ahead and move it over it went to the other screen but once 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 you open it up it it looks like like oops it looks like this alright um, but again you're gonna need a password and the password is educate 2020 alright so let me go ahead and X out of this and and right here these are hyperlinks as well so you have to press control click so I'm just open that to show you what it looks like and then that's what it looks like so just these are just some items some extra items um, that you can use in your classroom so that's that's what that is 
All right, so let me go ahead and just X out. Uh, X out of this. All right, so that's the eagle. All right, and so let's continue on. So you have your Leap 360 assessment design. So let's just, since we're talking about diagnostic, um, and notice they have them for animal as well, but let's just look at diagnostic. So you have your, the first link right here, the hyperlink is Diagnostic Assessment Guide for any ELA, English Language Arts. So let's go ahead and, well, it looks like I can't open in a new window. So I'm going to just click on it. All right, so it brings you to, to the, um, the section dealing with the Diagnostic Assessment Guide. Notice there are quite a few hyperlinks there as well. So, so this guide here has links to other documents. And inside these other documents are, are links as well. Um, so, so just make sure there's a lot of information here. Just make sure you go through each of those um, as, as carefully as possible so you can understand the LEAP360 diagnostic and interim um, assessments. So right here at the top, it says the LEAP360 Diagnostic Quick Start Guide. So the Quick Start Guide for Diagnostic, there's also one for interim. So this Quick Start Guide provides general information about the purpose of purpose, administration, scoring, and reporting of the diagnostic assessments. The guide also includes details on how teachers may access the online assessments in Google Chrome um, by using the, this link here and login information. So let's just go to that quick start guide, open a new window, and so you have this. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and expand it. Um, so this is a quick start guide. It gives you some information. Um, talks about assessment guides. So notice all these hyperlinks. And right here, um, if you want to see what the test looks like, as a student takes it, these are the um, the usernames, and then the password is Leap360 for each of those. And then here's the teacher access link. Now, um, I tried this a while ago, and it keeps turning. Um, so this is this is what what. So when you click on it, open a new window just to show you. It just keeps turning so you see right here it just keeps turning so there's something wrong with that link so I'm gonna have to try and call DRC for that one because it's, it's a DRC insight so I'm gonna have to call DRC for that and see why it just keeps turning it just keeps turning um, but I just want to mention this right here I'm gonna go back to let me move this over a little bit I'm gonna go back to the course to the canvas course right here you see where it says task one for teachers right here this is information on um, on on the um, on how to view and understand documents in DRC in this video right here I show you what this looks like so it worked a few years ago remember we hadn't used leap 360 in a few years and um, uh, this document I retrieved recently from DRC. So there's something wrong with, with the link here. I'll, I'll contact DRC and find out what's wrong with it. But in this video, I do show you how to get this link and how to input this information, um, the username and the password. The password is not case sensitive, so you can use all lowercase. You can use all uppercase for the for the word leap. It is not uh, case sensitive, um, but this is what what you would you would um, use if you want to see what the test looks like as students would take the test. Okay, all right. So let's so so this this right here was the the uh, quick start guide, and then. Um, you have information on scoring so there's the teacher study guide so right here the teacher study guide make sure you look at this so this talks about that teacher study guide so that's that task one so it's very important that that you look at this information here now one thing I want to mention is is remember this video was made a few years ago when we gave when students could take 
fourth grade leap test paper test now it's on lines but so in this video I do mention that right here it will say I do mention that there are fourth grade paper tests that's no longer the case alright so just keep that in mind so in DRC the only paper test you'll see is for grade three all right, but for diagnostic and interim in EBR, all students for the diagnostic and interim, all students will take the diagnostic and interim online in DRC. You will not be using paper tests for the diagnostic or interim. All right, now I'm not talking about the summative test, the LEAP test. Some schools will want to take the third grade test paper test. Some schools will want to take the third grade leap test online but for the diagnostic and interim all students will take the diagnostic and interim online including grade including grade three students all right so um, let's go back to the teacher guide so this is where we were um, let's scroll down I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible so I'm so I'm not making this video too long. Now on page 16, this is where they start talking about how each of those di diagnostic and interim tests are composed of. So for example, this is diagnostic, LEAP 360 diagnostic assessment structure for grades 3 through 8, English 1, English 2, forms 1A, 1B, 1C. So this is grade 3, you'll see grade 3 right here. And for grade 3 diagnostic, there's session 1, session 2, and then notice you'll see session 3A, session 3B, session 3C. All right we'll talk about how to figure out which one of those sessions students will take in a little while but notice that it, it talks about the number of passages it talks about the standard that's the focus it talks about the number and type of items right here talks about the points talks about suggested time and it talks about the content that's assessed all right and if we scroll down here's a one for grade four and then grade 5 and so on. Alright, so notice these are all the diagnostic right here. If you keep scrolling down, and this is the one for English 1, English 2, and then they talk about the a little bit more detail about the diagnostic item types. So they talk about the multiple choice, the description of each of those different item types, um, whether it's multiple choice, evidence-based, selected response, extended response, and then they talk about the scoring information, so make sure you look at that. Um, and then they talk about the reporting categories on page 21. And then then they talk to, they start talking about the interim assessment guide. So notice there's one for there's a quick start guide for that as well. And then here's where they talk about the the um, the different sessions for each of those. So grades three through eight forms A and B. All right, so you have your form A information, you have your form B information. Um, so lots of stuff there you need to be familiar with. Here's one for English one and English two. And then you have your ELA interim types, just like we talked about the diagnostic interim types. I'm sorry, um, item types. Scroll down keep going and then your reporting categories and then they start talking about math alright so the math starts on page 28 so you have your quick start guide for math then you have your item types right here or your task types and then the makeup of each of those okay alright now let's talk about those forms so if you go back to the let me see if I can quickly go back to it. So if you go back to the Canvas course, the home page, right here, and remember, I'm going to go where it says information for teachers. Um, let's see if I can quickly find it. Let's see. Uh, the testing calendar. See so where it says Leap 360 General Information? This testing calendar right here. So you click on the down arrow, and uh, it will open it up right here so here's your calendar and this is information on the 
um, when the interim one will be taken, when interim two will be taken, and so on. Notice that for math, there's there are two interims, and notice the dates for each of those grade levels. So they're different for each of those grade levels. And then the practice test is optional. So there is a practice test as well. The For ELA, there's only one interim. And for that interim for ELA, that one interim, all grade levels will take it January 7th through the 30th. And then the practice test is required for ELA. There's a practice test and that's required for ELA. And that will be given between February 3rd and March 14th. All right. Now, let me go back. So there's the calendar. Let's go back and uh, let's see if I can can find where the forms are. There's a section. Oh, it might be for, for teachers. So let's go back here. Um, okay, so you see where it says diagnostic information? Um, oh, let's see. There's one for for forms. All right, so you see where it says, which version do I give? There's one for the diagnostic. And for interim, right here, it says, which version do I give? So if I go right here, which version do I give? Um, it says this, for the diagnostic test, you will give the following forms for ELA and math. All right, so it says, note, please make sure yours, and this is for school test coordinators, by the way. So your school test coordinator will already set up the test sessions for your students and they will have provided the correct form. But always make sure that, that the form the students are taking are correct. Um, we're all humans and we sometimes make mistakes. So notice that LEAP 360 does not give achievement levels. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to get anything about whether your students are at, are at the advanced level, the master, mastery level, and so on. Only the LEAP summative assessments give achievement levels. So for ELA, grades 3, 4, and 6, we're going to use Form 1B for the diagnostics. Remember, this is diagnostic, diagnostic and that's expository. Form 1B is expository. For ELA, grade 5, we're going to use Form 1A which is expository for ELA grade 7, 8, English 1, and English 2, your school test coordinator will assign Form 1A, which is argument. And then for math, all grades, there's only one form to choose from. Okay, so there's no confusion for math. Make sure um, that your school test coordinator assign the correct form depending on the grade level. All right, so that is for diagnostic. Now let's go to interim. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, right here, interim information, which version do I give? And then for the interims, notice the table form. So it's a little bit more complicated for the interim. So the green is the ELA and the blue is the math. Notice for the interim, depending on the grade level, there's different forms that are going to be assigned. So for example, grade 3, your school test coordinator will assign Form 1B, which is a narrative. For grade 4, there's going to be assigned Form 1A, which is a literary task. So again, make sure that your school test coordinator is, is um, setting up test sessions with the correct form. For English 1 and English 2, there's uh, there's a Form 1, which is just called Research Simulation. So that's going to be for ELA. For math, for the interim, and notice there's for ELA, there's only one interim. There's, there's uh, notice right here, interim 2. There's only an interim 2 for math. There's none for ELA. And then for math, notice the different forms. Um, for the interim. So for interim one, everyone's going to use form one except for grade seven. Grade seven is going to say form 1B. Okay? And then for interim two, everyone's going to use form two except grade six and grade seven, 
which says form 2A. All right, so so there's there's there can be mistakes made here, so it's important that the correct form is being used for the particular grade level. Okay, all right, and I believe that's the rest of this. If you keep on going down, um, it just keeps talking about math information, um, and then the test materials for math diagnostic. Scratch paper, schools are required to provide scratch paper, such as line paper and uh, or online paper at all grade levels. The calculator policy for grades or sessions in which students is, in which calculator is allowed, it is recommended that the students use a handheld calculator, which they are most familiar with, as long as a calculator is allowed within the guidelines found in the appendix. And then the reference sheets, reference sheets for the diagnostic test at grades 6, 7, and 8, Algebra 1 and Geometry are available both online and in the appendix. All right, and then keep on going. And then now's the information on the interim. So we were, the, the one before that was the diagnostic. So here's the information of the interim for each of those forms. And then keep on going. I'm just moving quickly here. Keep on going. And... Uh, um, there's more information about the item types for the interims. So make sure you're reading that. Um, oh, and, and make sure your students are practicing with the online um, with the online teaching tools here, the online tools training right here. So make sure make sure they're they're practicing with this, so they know how to use the tools that are available for them on the assessments both summative and formative all right so that's called the online teaching the, the online tools training all right and then scrolling down and then there's the additional resources that are available so look at all those hyperlinks you see all the information about the remediation guides equation builders right here and there's the appendix that we're talking about. So remember um, the this right here, the teacher access link. Remember that's the one where it's not working. It just keeps keeps turning. See right here. Um, so I'll, I'll have to call DRC and find out what's wrong with it. But the, these are the username and passwords that you can use to to access the test as the students would access the test. Okay, and I believe I believe that's it. Um, so just make sure you familiarize yourself with the and this was called the Teacher's Guide to Leap 360.